Uh, this question is actually from a chemistry practical sec four. <laughs> I take the practical question, I change it to become a theory question. Okay, from one of the screen. Shawnee carried on an experiment in his school lab to determine the concentration of a sample hydrochloric acid. Okay, very interesting. See, ah, usually how do you find out the concentration of a sample hydrochloric acid? In sec three, you do what? You do titration. Also known as volumetric analysis. What will you use? You want to find the acid, right? You'll do KCL. You'll go and find and use sodium hydroxide and alkali, usually, if not potassium hydroxide. Yes? So they react. Agree with me, everyone? Make sense? Then you'll form salt and water. Can I recall back? So this is your sec three stuff, right? Volumetric analysis, acid-based hydration. What do you add? You need to have an indicator. The indicator change color, then you get the volume of sodium hydroxide, and after that, you do all your calculation. Remember that part? Yes, volumetric analysis. So ladies and gentlemen, usually you want to find the concentration of a unknown, say, acid alkali. This is what you do. Use an indicator, do hydration. Make sense? Can I? So in the exam, they will twist this question sometimes. They use the concept in this topic. What they do is they use energy changes to find the concentration. How do they do that? Let me show you using this question. They're converted to a theory question. Okay? So we don't use indicator. Understand what's happening? Huh? All right? Again, the, the lesson is recorded. Yeah? Here we go. What they do is here, which I've kind of explained to you when I go through the concepts. 25 cm cube of the hydrochloric acid that you're trying to find the concentration on was placed in a styrofoam cup, which is known to be a good insulator, very friendly. Aqueous sodium hydroxide, they still use alkali to react with it. It has a certain concentration, which is really like volumetric analysis titration, was added to the acid. In the cup, 2 cm cube at a time, still use your burette, right? But it's like 2 cm cube, stop. 2 cm cube, stop. What they do is here, the mixture was stirred and the highest temperature reach was recorded after each addition of the alkali. So after each 2 cm cube. They got the results of what? Of the highest temperature. So it's a value. And they plot it on a piece of graph paper. So how will this pan out in a practical? They will ask you to do this experiment. They ask you to collect the results and then in the table. After that, they give you a graph paper. They ask you to plot the graph, yes? And the following questions will all come out from there. Okay? Now, let's take a look. All right, so take a look, uh, a graph, y-axis temperature, x-axis is the volume of sodium hydroxide that you add from the bu red. Okay, makes sense, huh? And then the temperature keep increasing. So where, how many experiments did you conduct? All right, or how many temperature reading do you, do you measure? So many of them, everyone, okay? So you will have these points. This point, 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 uh, this point, and this point. Everyone okay? And that's where you draw the line of best fit or the curve of best fit. Everyone okay? okay huh? So in practical, you do this. Good. Then how? Then I ask you to discuss. So to give you a few marks here. Number one, why is it necessary to use an insulated container for experiment? I.e. the styrofoam cup to pack coffee and tea. Why don't you use a glass B? Go. All right, one mark. Standard question. So give us an answer. To do what? To, you see, the whole experiment all is dependent on what? It's dependent on that one thermometer to measure. So I need the thermometer about to measure as accurately as possible. What are you afraid? you afraid that the temperature in the solution or the heat energy is lost to the surrounding air, to the surrounding. Make sense? So I use an insulated container, like a styrofoam cup. Yes? So my answer, be careful, it's not stop, it's minimize heat loss to the surrounding and ensure the heat is transferred to the solution whereby the bulk of my thermometer is measuring. There's always some heat loss. We try to minimize as much as we can. Yes, using a styrofoam cup. There's no such thing as 100% prevention. Next, give a reason why the mixture was stirred after each addition of aqueous sodium hydroxide. Why you stir it? 
the technical answer usually in the practical, all right, uh, when there's a practical question that looks like this, uh, this is uh, what I will usually write. Ensure that the reaction is uniform. So is that every part of the styrofoam cup and the reaction over there, all right, they all look the same. Very important. And the temperature change are detected accurately. Again, I need the measurement to be as accurate as possible. From the graph itself, all right, deduce if the reaction was exo or endo. Exothermic, all right? Why? Because the temperature increase. How do you know the temperature increase? From the graph, right? They keep hiding. You add more, the temperature get higher. Plus, the array is highest temperature reach. Right? Correct? So energy is given out. It's exothermic. Right? Because you measure the highest temperature. One mark, one mark, I'll slowly collect. And that's my full marks. Okay? My practical, that's what is happening. People start to lose that one mark and one mark. All the questions, one mark, two marks, one mark, one mark. All right, uh, D part one, part two, part three, I'm going to do them all together. All right, here we go. Uh, from the graph, state the maximum temperature reach during this reaction and the volume of sodium hydroxide added for this temperature. So there are two questions over here. Maximum temperature reach and the volume of sodium hydroxide. After which, why did the temperature fall after this maximum point has been reached? All right. And after which, uh, this is where uh, we want to do, which is calculate the concentration of the acid, whereby we don't know its concentration, right? They're all linked together. So let's take a look together over here. Yeah. Okay, so you done run the experiment, you got the graph, all right? Then now we need to find the highest point, all right? I think it's somewhere here. Yes? All right, is greeter, please use a ruler. What is this temperature? Why is this important in a while? All right, maybe that one also important, but this is important. This is 11, right? I think it's very precise. So you get one mark or not two marks for this. 11. Is it 11? Yes. Someone, why did the temperature drop over here? We talked about this before, right? Saturated solution is when I dissolve a salt. There's no salt here. This is an acid-based neutralization reaction. All right? So my answer is here. I think there are two points to it. Number one, the neutralization reaction has stopped. Neutralization gives out heat energy. All right? I write a bit of words here to help you recap, right? Which is an exothermic reaction, which gives out heat energy, right? The bracket is not part of your answer, not really necessary, right? Exothermic reaction gives out heat energy. Why has the neutralization stopped? Let's be a bit more precise. Scenes, who has been used up? All right. Oh, so it stopped giving out heat energy. To the surrounding solution. Make sense? Then there's a second part to it, right? So your solution is quite hot, like my hot coffee today morning, yeah? But I never drink it fast enough. I discussed it before. So what happened? Heat loss to the surrounding. Yes? In physics term, it's called thermal equilibrium. Loss to surrounding where? The air, the atmosphere. Yeah, then we carry on, which is to calculate the concentration of the hydrochloric acid use. Now, why do they help us by telling us where is the maximum temperature reach and what is the volume that uh that gets to that point, right? Simply because this is the point whereby we say all the acid has been reacted. They react just nice. Volumetric analysis done. Okay. Here we go. I'll use the space here. Cause it the concentration. Yeah. 
HCl react with sodium hydroxide. Become sodium chloride and water. Equation must be balanced. Yes. So what are the information that we know? All right. So this is in the conical flask. This is in the buret. The way they react is one is to one. So what are the information I have? I know that the volume I use in conical flask is 25 cm cubed. Sodium hydroxide, I know from the graph, right? So this is from the question. Sodium hydroxide, I know the volume is 11. Why? This is where we extrapolate, yes? So we extrapolate and get the value. We also know the concentration because it's also G in the question and they ask us to calculate this the concentration good old more calculation volumetric analysis okay yes so where we start obviously we start here first and then we move over all right so here we go more of sodium hydroxide also known as amount of sodium hydroxide yeah, this concentration multiplied by the volume. Need to convert to dm cube. Uh, there are a lot of new students here. I, I never teach you last year sec three. All right. Uh, if your mo is really really weak, and you need help, please let my admin know and ask her how you can learn from me, or ask them how they can learn from me asap. Because sec four topic are all application. Every topic will have more calculation. You cannot run away from it, including all your practicals in the lab. You're going to touch your calculator. Inevitable. All right. So your more sucks, then you're going to like, you're going to lose chemistry. You're going to lose it. Okay. Because it's always a, a pin. Every lesson is a pin. When they discuss question, when it's more. Okay. So uh, again, 0 0.011 more. All right. And then we all know based on the molar ratio, how they react. HCl and NaOH is a balanced equation. This is equals to the mole of HCl. Yeah, one is to one, more ratio, exactly. Consider that. Therefore, the concentration of sodium, uh, not sodium, but hydrochloric acid, indeed. Yeah, in water is more divided by the volume. The volume need to convert to dm cube once again. And overall, the value will be 0 0.44 more per dm cube. So what is the takeaway from this question? Very important, okay? Very important is what? Is that E, I want to find a concentration of acid alkaline. Don't always need to use indicator already. Yes. I can use what? I can use a thermometer because I've learned this topic called energetics. All in all, I need to find what? I need to find the volume of the sodium hydroxide in the buret that creates that they react just nice with the hydrochloric acid. Make sense? Instead of using an indicator. Can I run? That's what we are doing. If you would like to catch my latest videos, click on subscribe button right now. And click on the bell if you want to receive instant notifications once I've uploaded my latest video. If you would like to join my live chemistry classes and revision workshops, Go on to winnerseducation.com and find out how you can score distinction for chemistry on a consistent basis, either in our center or online via Zoom. If you want to check out my online school, go on to passwithdistinction.teachable.com. You'll be able to learn chemistry concepts at your own pace and anywhere in the world, topic by topic. This is Sean Chua from Winners Education to your distinction in chemistry.